Hey folks, this is my next video on progress and uh, digging into the engine here in my 1938 Plymouth. It's a 1953 Dodge engine, a Canadian built 25 inch. Uh, I suspect it to be 228 cubic inches um, based on I measured the bore. No, I measured the stroke. Um, when the car was all assembled and running, I could measure the stroke, but I couldn't really measure the bore. So um, I'm going to dig into the engine here. Actually, um, and this is my latest update. Um, the last couple of months, I've been kind of prepping, getting ready for this stage. Just knew I wanted, what I wanted to do. I was practicing measuring bores and I was practicing using my my dial bore gauge, uh, my snap T gauges, calipers. All those things take a little practice. When you're not a professional, you're learning as you go. It's it's been fun, and now I'm ready to put some of those skills to work and uh, dig into this engine a little bit and have a look and really see. Um, the condition of this engine and decide where I'm going next. So, here you go. Enjoy. I'm going to move ahead and pull the head off. I want to have a look at what I see inside the cylinder head here before I pull the engine out. Why? Well, I guess I'm a little anxious to see what's, what I'm going to find in there. that broke off one so far all right the big reveal what are we gonna find All right, so some of my findings. Sorry, that's just a spare piston. I was looking at. I'll show you that in a second. This engine made uh, between 95 and 100 psi on a cold and wet compression test. The cylinder walls don't appear to be scored up. Not that I can see. Valve seats. Well, that's another story. We'll get into those, but they they sealed for sure. So we know the psi was good. Car started and ran absolutely awesome, as you could uh, see from my multiple videos that I've posted. So I don't, there's nothing here really, I'm not an expert at this, but there's nothing here that really scares me at this point. There's a little ridge at the top of each cylinder. I'll get in there and measure it. So there, that's news to me. I'm gonna measure the bores right now, see what I find. Well, if I just hold that there. That one. Yeah, four and a quarter. I'm happy with that. So we got four and a quarter by three and three eighths stock bore engine here. That is a 228 cubic inch. That's what I suspected based on the serial number on the side of the block here. Uh, original bores. Interesting. That's cool. So it, it's Kind of what all the stories are adding up, everything I've been told about this engine from uh, the fellow that installed it way back in the day. I'm hoping I can maybe clean up that little bit of corrosion in the cylinders there. If I could uh, hone that, that'd be a nice cheap way to do it. Because I don't think this is my forever engine anyways. Um, this is a 25 inch long Canadian block out of a 1953 Dodge. Um, I do have a line on a 251 cubic inch, which will bolt in here just nicely, fit exact same length, Canadian built engine. That would be the one I'd really want to spend the money on and rebuild. This one I'm just kind of experimenting, I'm learning. It's a good refresher. I'm also interested in putting a little bit of money into it. Just don't know that I want to do a full rebuild. It ran good. A few leaks. We talk about various things that I want to do while this engine block is out. Maybe a hone and a ray ring. We'll see. I'll try and measure the cylinder taper right around, see how that goes. 
So one other point I noticed in this engine is this valve number six here, intake valve. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's dished in the center, drops down. All the others do not. So I'm going to guess that that valve was the uh, maybe replaced at some point, or it was the result of a, a valve grind. Maybe uh, you know some overdue maintenance on the valves didn't happen. And we know that cylinder number six, the back there has a tendency to run a little warm. Be the furthest from the cooling coming in from the water pump, the coolant. So that's likely probable. The other thing I did is I opened up all the valves and I just wiggled them a bit just for a feel. It's like this. Let's check where valve guide where. This one's excessive. I mean, not, not really bad, but it's the worst. Number one and number six intake. No, that's exhaust. The smaller valve is exhaust, the large one is intake. Number one and number six at the back, both intake valves have the most valve guide wear, from what I can tell, based on uh, grabbing them all by feel. I didn't actually measure them, but that's, again, that confirms my suspicions. Um, when I go down a long hill in gear and have the uh, engine holding me back and uh, my foot off the throttle coasting down a hill, I would get a little bit of blue smoke. When I got to the bottom, I'd give it some gas and it'd clear out. That's an indication of valve guide wear. And I think, I don't know, I don't have a ton of experience, but what I feel there tells me that, yeah, okay, that makes sense. There's valve guide wear there. So not a surprise. All right, so that's probably enough digging for this video and exploring. I'm gonna summarize the video here. I like to do that and summarize my findings and new learnings. Make sure uh, I grasp all the concepts. So we learned today that the, with the, getting the cylinder head off, we measured the bore and the stroke, that the bores appear to be very close to 3.375 inches. Uh, which is three and three eighths, which is stock bore, and the stroke is four and a quarter, and that is um, bang on for the measurements for a Canadian built 228 cubic inch engine. It's a 25 inch long uh, 228 out of a 1953 Dodge. We also were able to look at the, uh, the valve guide wear. I rotated the uh, crankshaft by hand and opened each, both intake and exhaust valve on all six uh, cylinders and I was able to verify that I could feel movement at uh, the exhaust valve on cylinder one, two, and six. Um, so that showed me that there's uh, excessive valve guide wear in one, two, and six, uh, which is kind of a, a suspicion I had. I knew I had some, I thought I had some valve guide wear just from driving the car and looking at oil burn and when it occurred. That, that kind of pretty much confirms my suspicions and I also see oily film buildup wetter areas on the top of the cylinder deck on cylinders one two and six I've been told before that cylinder six tends to run the hottest it's prone to more valve wear I see number six exhaust valve appears to have been replaced again that tells me that Someone's been in there probably and done a valve grind at some point, probably replaced that exhaust valve, probably burnt it up maybe, just ran hot. And if you don't set the valves, the valve doesn't cool enough and um, it'll burn out. You can have that happen. It's probably happened to this car. But the boards are protected and, and stock. That's cool. Uh, we look at the cylinder head. It looks decent. I don't see any signs of any failure or any other work on this engine other than so far, probably a valve grind. So that's cool. I get a real good engine to start uh, experimenting with here and educating myself and learning as I go. So I'm not an expert on this. I'm learning as I go as well. I'm doing lots of reading and I'm hoping that there's some people following along that have a lot of experience. You can kind of guide me a little bit too. That wouldn't hurt. Uh, I don't mind making the videos and sharing with people, but I'm also going to expose my limitations of knowledge and experience as well. I'm not a pro. I'm learning. I'm a shade tree backyard mechanic. All right. What I got here is my bore dial gauge and I've set my micrometer here to exactly three and three eighths bore 3.375 
So next, what I do is I have to zero that gauge at that bore, because we know we're stock bore on this car. And I've, I've spent some time at already. I just basically gotta set it so that the lowest number I read on here is a zero. By rocking it back and forth, there we go. I'm at zero, you can't really see it, the camera's not in the best position, but. So when I rock this gauge, and when it gets to zero on the gauge, it's gonna be exactly 3.375 of an inch. Three and three eighths. All right, so my gauge zero. This little black indicator on the top here. I've made it. That's my zero. Hopefully, you can see that in the camera. When I get inside that little lip at the top of the ridge of the engine, right on the top of the cylinder here, when I go, the lowest number I get is zero. That's three and three eighths bore. That's the stock original bore right there. I'm going to drop below the ridge, and you're going to see the gauge move. There it goes. So this is the cylinder wear below that ridge. The lowest number I can get is 13 and a half thou. 13 and a half thousandths of an inch of wear in that cylinder from when it was new. Now we know 13 and a half thou was the lowest measurement at the top. Let's go midway down and see what we get. I got like Four and a half thou, no, three and a half thou, where at the center, all the way to the bottom, down where the pistons are right down at the bottom there, just come up a little bit from that. I got four thou, halfway, it's about th three and a half. Okay, so I got some serious taper going on here. I got like 14 and a half thou at the top. Four and a half thou at the bottom. I have a ten thousandths of an inch taper in my cylinder wall. It's tapered like a V. Ten thousandths of an inch. I, I'm guessing that happens and it wears that way because the cylinder, when the piston's at the top of the cylinder, the explosion occurs, the piston rings, everything's forced out extreme, way out when they're all extreme pressure. And then as it drops, the pressure drops down a bit and the, the rings collapse again. So you get most wear at the top, and then it shrinks and comes out again. So the piston rings are expanding in and out now. So that's out of spec. If I look up the, the spec on a Canadian 228 inch, or 228 cubic inch engine, it tells me that my cylinder's maximum allowable taper is one and a half thousandths of an inch. One and a half thou, and I have 10 thou taper there. So that's pretty considerable. Um, that's not ideal. The engine should be machined and rebuilt, I suppose, because it's it's tapered outside of spec. Now this engine ran fine. I wanted to get into it, learn more about it, and try and do what I'm doing here. This has been an awesome experience so far. I've loved this tremendously. I've learned so much. I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do with this engine. I'm gonna take it out regardless. Uh, I'm, I, it ran well, decent, had a bit of valve guide wear. I could um, put in a few valve guides. I could take out the piston rings. I could hone the cylinders. I could maybe take out the pistons, hone the cylinders, maybe put brand new stock rings in it again. It ran. It made 100 PSI, between 95 and 100 PSI in a compression test. Um, fix the frost plugs. Probably go for as long as I wanted it to. Mm. It's been around a long time. I gotta decide. Do I want to rebuild this engine fully and do it right and spend the big bucks? Tough decision. Gotta decide. Thanks for following along. Subscribe, subscribe if you want to follow along and uh, listen to me torment myself here about what I'm gonna do. Talk, talk to you later.